Hello Taurus, welcome to your forecast for November 2023. As we start the month, you can see the main focus, I would say, is definitely Sun, Mercury, and Mars, which are all in Scorpio. And Scorpio is your opposing sign. It's your seventh house, right? So it has everything to do with other people. The spotlight is not so much on you this time of year as much. It's more about your relationships, any kind of partnerships you have, your, you know, not just romantic relationships, but any friendships as well. Um, you know, really, you are having more enjoyment, more focus, more more activity in general with those relationships right and much of your life you know you are experiencing kind of vicariously through other people at this time of year um also you know more meaning that we can kind of glean from these three planets in scorpio um would be that you know they are kind of opposing you right sun mars mercury and scorpio you're opposing signs so they they are opposite you they are kind of clashing with your energy in a way so throughout this you know beginning half of the of november let's just say it may feel like you're kind of at odds with other people you know and that's a bit unusual for you taurus right because you tend to be a bit you know charismatic others enjoy your company that may still be true to some extent but at the same time you know everything is relative right so relatively speaking you may feel like you're kind of just on you know a different page than other people you know people seem to be like against you or there's some kind of tension part of that is specifically because of mars in scorpio as well right mars brings attraction and desire so you may have more attraction and desire maybe more like sexuality flirting things like that um you know but at the same time mars also makes things competitive it makes the dynamic kind of edgy and tense so um so that's kind of the nature of your relationships more activity maybe more interesting and, and meaningful conversations or developments with your relationships but also kind of you know this tension if that makes sense so it's kind of a mixed bag um but yeah i'm gonna go through and give you some key dates for november and talk about some uh developments that will occur um okay so the first thing i want to talk about is that major configuration in scorpio um let's also talk about venus though so venus is still in virgo and this is your fifth house right your fifth house of creativity and pride and self-expression among other things uh children it's playful energy so um so that's a pretty nice area to have it right virgo is a sister sign to taurus both are earth signs so in other words, Vir uh, Venus and Virgo, it's kind of agreeing with your energy. It's, it's giving you some of that, you know, Venusian pleasure and abundance, again, specifically in your creative pursuits. So definitely uh, utilize that. Venus will enter Libra very soon. Um, so, you know, make the most of that Venus and Virgo energy by exploring your creativity, you know, do some kind of artwork or, you know, whatever it is, if you if you have some kind of line of work that involves like making a craft or if you excel in customer service you know or it doesn't have to be work related it could be something you do for fun whatever it is you know that you do or make to express yourself you know enjoy that abundance and creativity because venus is shining kind of a a light on that area for you still okay the first key event that i wanted to talk about for november is saturn turning direct so you can see here uh saturday november 4th is when saturn will turn direct at zero degrees pisces right and Pisces is your 11th house. So 11th house has to do with um, your networking. It's how you associate with groups and it's kind of like how you associate with the public and you know the outer world and, and things like that. And Saturn brings about a need for greater responsibility and discipline. Um, when planets are retrograde, so, you know, Saturn's just coming out of retrograde. So to illustrate what this means, I wanna first talk about what it meant when it was retrograde. Uh, when planets are retrograde, they're kind of offline. Their energies still affect us, but in a way that's a little bit convoluted or, you know, it's more spiritual, it's more subtle, right? Uh, so when planets turn direct like this, their energies come back online. They affect us in a more literal, more direct, kind of visceral way. So Saturn in the 11th house turning direct it's going to, you know, af on and after November 4th, it's going to bring more of a need for getting real with yourself and, you know, specifically how you relate to the community. You know, we are all part of certain tribes, clubs, groups, you know, how do you fit in at work or in public, or even online activities, all of these areas, you may find the need for greater, you know, discipline, discernment, responsibility moving forward. Okay. Okay, and then let's go to November 8th. So Wednesday, November 8th, 
uh, Venus will leave Virgo and enter Libra, right? So um, it's still trailing behind these other inner planets, but it is making its way now entering Libra. Um, Venus is very strong in Libra, so its energies are, you know, for everyone, its energies are a little bit stronger now that it's entering Libra. Uh, for you specifically, Libra is your sixth house. So this has to do with kind of the maintenance of life, you know, um, like your health, making sure you're not spending too much money, you know, things like that. It's really not an exciting house at all. However, this is a very useful place to have Venus in because again, you know, Venus is a benefic. Venus brings abundance and pleasure. So in other words, now that you have Venus entering your sixth house, <coughs> You may enjoy, you know, if you're making any kind of changes with your lifestyle, your health, your budget, things like that, um, you know, you can really make the most of changes in those areas and maybe actually enjoy the process uh, with Venus entering leave right now. OK. OK. And then moving right along a couple days ahead to November 10th. Uh, now Mercury changes signs as well. So Mercury has been in Scorpio for a few weeks. Now it enters Sagittarius. So of course this changes the dynamic specifically with information and how you are communicating, how you are receiving information as well as giving it, right? And it also just changes the whole analytical process, you know, analysis, information, communication, busyness as well. So with Mercury entering Sagittarius, now it is in your eighth house. So this indicates that you're thinking, communicating, and maybe learning a lot more specifically about your investments. You know, um, do you have any agreements, agreements you've made with others, agreements others have made with you, commitments, obligations, uh, shared resources, anything having to do with bank accounts, stocks, um, credit cards, what else, inheritance, taxes, you know, it, it, it applies to a lot of areas, but what it has in common is those investments. What are you investing in <clears throat> with your time, energy, money, as well as your emotion? You know, who are you investing in? Um, all of these issues come to the forefront. So ma basically, it's mostly financial as well as it does apply a lot to relationship dynamics as well. You know, who are you really investing in? Who or what are you relying on? You know, and does that work for you? Um, the, all of these areas may be areas that you are thinking about more, learning about more, and kind of tweaking and, you know, making some adjustments moving forward with Mercury in this area for you, okay? Okay, November 13th, uh, now there is a new moon at 20 degrees Scorpio. So you can see here, um, looks like it's very early in the day on Monday, November 13th. So New moon in Scorpio, again, this is activity in your seventh house and new moons, just like they sound like it, they are an opportunity for a new beginning. I always say though, a new moon, it's not necessarily the best day to like launch a huge new project or start something new in a physical way on a new moon. It's more a time of like planting a seed. So it's not the harvest time. It's not a time where the plant is like bursting out of the ground. It's, it's where you plant the seed. So this is kind of subtle, okay? Um, let me spell it out for you in a different way. So new moon in your seventh house. Um, I would really go over your intentions, intentions just in general with any part of life, but especially having to do with those relationship dynamics. So if you have, you know, if you're engaging in a relationship currently, this definitely has to do with that. Um, but even if you're not, you know, any kind of partnership you have in your life, any like best friend or, you know, someone you work with that you're very close to, um, you know, really any kind of relationship this may be an area a, a time of change in those areas so i would say to you know that's why we go over our intentions think about what you want with your relationships do your relationships work for you um is there you know it's all about balance and compromise you know is there is there a source of imbalance unbalanced energy for you um you know maybe it may behoove you to honor someone else more or maybe you need to honor yourself more, you know, or or something like that. This is an area of um, it's an opportunity to kind of mull these things over and reevaluate those relationship dynamics. All right. Um, OK, and then moving forward to November 22nd, this is where the sun leaves Scorpio and enters Sagittarius. I have mixed feelings about this for you because on the one hand, the sun is now no longer forming a direct aspect with your sign. Um, the sun had a much more, you know, much more direct aspect to you when it was in Scorpio. However, uh, that can be good or bad. So with the sun now entering Sagittarius and being kind of like, you know, indirect, it technically forms a quincunx with Taurus. 
that means that the intensity may kind of lessen for you. So that could be good. You know, the energies may kind of relax a little bit. You may not have, you definitely won't have as much of that um, tension that I had described. Yes, Mars is still in Scorpio, but it's on its way out as well. So, you know, now we have not only Mercury, but also the sun in Sagittarius. So again, you know, they're not really forming a direct, a direct aspect with you. So that intensity may definitely lessen. Um, on the other hand, you know, sun is entering Sagittarius, which is your eighth house. So again, you know, there's an increasing focus with those investments, those, you know, bank accounts, <clears throat> um, commitments, obligations, all of that good stuff. You know, you've already been thinking about these things, learning about these things, tweaking these things since Mercury's been in your eighth house. Now sun is entering eighth house as well. So that's showing an even, even further increased energy and focus in those areas. So, so yeah, it's a great time for reevaluating those investments, making a new investment, um, reevaluating any kind of commitments or obligations you have, any any long-term investments, all that good stuff, okay? Um, okay, <clears throat> and then moving forward to November 24th, you know, only a couple days later, now we have Mars entering Sagittarius as well. So all three of these energies are moving, you know, roughly side by side, kind of, although Mercury at this point is zooming ahead. Um, but now we have the three of them, Mercury, Sun, and Mars, all in Sagittarius. They're all in your eighth house. So that's showing a lot of increased activity in your eighth house. But again, you know, yes, that may apply some new pressure and new changes with those commitments, obligations, investments, etc. However, as a whole, I do think your life will get a little bit more casual or less intense with this new development of course that does depend on other aspects of your chart you know um, it depends on what else is going on but generally speaking if you have you know major tourist placements i would say that would be the common theme common thread um, that intensity is lessening and instead of focusing so directly on your relationships now the focus is becoming a little bit more long term in nature you know investments obligations etc etc Last thing I'm going to talk about today is uh, November 27th, there is a full moon at four degrees Gemini. Okay. Um, so this is kind of, this is exciting, right? For, I mean, for anyone, uh, full moon in Gemini, <clears throat> um, this is a Yang full moon. So this means sun is in Sagittarius being opposed by moon in Gemini. These are the signs of, you know, self-expression and expansion and learning. Um, they are very adventurous, very curious signs, right? Um, so what does that mean for you? So for you this is an opposition between your second and eighth houses so again it's highlighting those investments that you're making there could be changes with your income uh changes with your where does your abundance come from how are you supporting yourself right so at this time i could see finances fluctuate for you depend again it depends on what else is going on in your chart as well but generally speaking for taurus I could see you making a lot of money around this time. I could see you spending a lot of money around this time as well, because this isn't necessarily bad or good. It's not that simple. It just has to do with changes in general to how you support yourself, how you make money, how you spend money, all of that. Um, it could still have to do with other people and investments and things like that. I've been you know, talking about how that has been increasingly becoming the focus. Um, but the full moon, the moon is in Gemini, which is second house so that points to the main area of focus being, you know, it's, it's kind of simple. It's your income, it's your expenditures. Um, how are you making and spending money in a way that is truly supporting you, your highest good, right? Um, not only in facilitating you getting your basic needs, but also getting some kind of luxury, some kind of pleasure out of life, right? Um, those are the areas that are being highlighted right now. So, so this could be a really great time for, you know, maybe, uh, if there's something that would truly increase the pleasure, the abundance of your life, then maybe go out and make that purchase. That could be a good time for that. Of course, use your own discernment, but, um, that's generally, that's generally the focus for that full moon, making money, spending money, being wise and doing so, but also, you know, live a little, enjoy yourself, right? Okay, so that's what I have for you for this month. Um, the chart definitely looks very different at the end of the month as usual, right? Um, we start out with a lot of yin energies in the beginning of the month, but by the end, you can see we have Sun, Mercury, and Mars in Sagittarius and Venus in Libra. And again, like I touched on before, both Sagittarius and Libra, 
neither of them form major aspects with Taurus. So I really think you're going to see the intensity lessening as you get to the end of the month, especially because you're, you're still recovering this month from that full moon lunar eclipse that was in uh, Taurus on October 28th, right? So, so especially in the beginning part of the month, it's going to start out intense and it's going to get a little easier and kind of more low key toward the end of the month. So anyway, I hope that helps you. Hope that was interesting and have a great month.